Zackpack, he's always there for you. Zackpack, only on YouTube. Zackpack, what will he do next? Zackpack, let's find out, cause it's on with the show. Holy crap, guys. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I want to start this video off by saying what I actually thought of the movie, because this movie has been getting a lot of complaints, a lot of criticisms, and I understand why. There's definitely a lot about this movie that is, that for core, like, it, 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 it's really weird. It pisses off both ends of the spectrum when it comes to the Harry Potter audience. The casual watchers just think there's too much going on. There's so much going on, they can't keep up. And the subtle references that they do have to Harry Potter that the hardcore fans would appreciate, they just don't, they don't get it. Like, I noticed every single Harry Potter Easter egg in that movie. But the problem with the hardcore Harry Potter audience is that there's a lot of inconsistencies. And with that also fast pace, it just it just created too much of a jumbled experience. And I'm going to tell you guys what I think. Lots of people had problem with the story in general, and I did not have a problem with the story. I thought the story was pretty decent. Um, you know, with Newt having to go to Paris, and that's where Credence is, and you know, all that stuff. Just my problem with the film lies in, like, the little, tiny little details and, like, just things in it that just really set me off as weird. Let me talk about the non-spoilery stuff first so I can get the stuff that's not spoilers out of the way and then I can get into things I would spoil, you know, the plot a little bit. Um, firstly, um, they really chose a weird editing style. Um, just, like, the way that the video, that the, that the movie was put together, um... You know, there were really close-up shots, the camera was shaky in some spots, it just didn't feel polished in a lot of areas. You know, it just felt weird. Um, it felt rushed, in a way. Not, like, not to a point where it's unwatchable, but there are definitely parts where you're like, wow, that looks weird, that's an interesting choice. And, you know, I actually said that about the first film, too. There were a few choices that they made that made it look really weird. And that continues in this movie. So, I, I don't know. And also, I think one of the main problems that this movie um, relies on is it relies heavily on nostalgia, but not giving any purpose behind the nostalgia in it. Now, I'm not going to say too much about this, because obviously that's going into spoiler territory, but there's a lot of things that, like, oh, it's so cool, it's a Harry Potter reference, but it has no purpose being there. So it, it just feels kind of just pushed in. And sometimes, if you're a hardcore Harry Potter fan, you'll know that it's even inconsistent at times and goes against J.K. Rowling's own writing. So, and I guess the last non-spoiler thing in it is, like I said, with people who are just typical people who think that Harry Potter is cool, is that there's just too much going on. There's, like, at least eight different main characters that have their own things going on. It's not like, you know, there's two groups, that, like, in the first movie... You know, in the first Fantastic Beasts movie, there was a lot going on with just two, you know, sets of main characters. There was Newt, Tina, Queenie, and uh, Jacob, and then there was the whole Credence side story. So, those were two different stories going on at the same time, but this movie, God, it has uh, Jacob and Newt doing one thing, Tina doing another thing, Queenie doing another thing, Credence doing another thing, Grindelwald doing another thing, Dumbledore doing another thing, Lita doing another thing. Everyone's just doing so much different things that when it all comes together, it's just like a humble, jumbled mess. So it can really look and feel unorganized a lot of the time, and it really is unfortunate. All right, so before we get into the spoiler part, I'm going to mention the good stuff um, about this movie, because there are there are quite a few good things. Um, like I said, there are quite a few Harry Potter references that do make you feel at home. It makes you feel like, you know, oh, this is really a Harry Potter movie, and it makes... Like, my problem with the original Fantastic Beasts is it just didn't feel like part of the Wizarding World. So this new introduction of, of all these uh, newer characters, but with places that we kind of also know, it really makes it feel more like part of the same world. Also, I do really have to compliment the soundtrack. The soundtrack is ridiculously good in this movie. Like, I have to say, it's probably one of my favorite um, soundtracks of any of the uh, Wizarding World films. It's amazing. 
And there were quite a few of the characters that I like. Though, I'm going to go to another problem here, which kind of goes into the point I made earlier about too much going on. There's not a lot of character development. You, he, I, I think the only character that got a decent amount of development was maybe Lita Lestrange. I think she was the only new character, let me say, new character that got a decent amount of exposition and, um, you know, uh, details about her actual character. All right, so let's go into the spoiler section. Um, if you don't want to hear the spoilers, you can click off now. Um, yeah, spoilers. Oh my god, this movie was all over the place. Um, I, I don't even know how much I can really recap without just be getting confused. Because one of my things, like, I love Doctor Who. Uh, I made a video about it before, but I love Doctor Who, right? It's one of my favorite TV series. My problem with it as it went on to the 11th, the 12th Doctors, is that the, the plot just got too convoluted. There was too much going on. It was very confusing for me personally. And this movie kind of falls under that boat. There's a lot going on. There's stuff that I still don't understand. And I've been watching people's videos for, for days about it. And I, and I still don't understand a lot of it. And J.K. Rowling gives us more questions than answers when it comes to a lot of the things. Like, with the, whole, the beginning scene with Abernathy and Grindelwald. How do they switch bodies like that? Was it Polyjuice Potion? Though it would be really weird if it was Polyjuice Potion. Because they turned back into their respective bodies at the same time. So it can't really be Polyjuice Potion. Did Grindelwald take Polyjuice Potion? And is uh, is uh, Abernathy like one of those uh, shape-shifting things? Like uh, like uh, Tonks is? You know, because he, he, do he does, you know, shape-shift again into a different character later. You know, this old woman on an elevator. So it's like... Is that what it is? And also, one thing that confused me that I didn't have, I haven't heard many people talk about it, but the whole thing after the circus, right, when New and Jacob were looking for Tina, they used this gold dust stuff and the Niffler. What was the point of that? Like, what? How does that? Like, I don't understand. I, I really don't. You know, there were parts of this movie that did take me out of feeling like it was like a Harry Potter like movie. And that's because J.K. Rowling added so much stuff that was never, ever even seen before, you know, in the Potter series. It just didn't feel like Harry Potter. Like, everything had some sort of replacement. Like, the Unbreakable Vow was um, replaced by the uh, Blood Pact. Now, I get it. You know, uh, Unbreakable Vows, you die if you break that. So, obviously, there would be uh, there would be a lot of complications when it comes to Dumbledore and Grindelwald fighting. But, you know, just the Blood Pact... If you're going to make a reason for Dumbledore not fighting Grindelwald, don't make it something stupid like a blood pact when an unforgivable, or, or sorry, an unbreakable vow, it, it exists. So that shouldn't even exist. It should be based off of Dumbledore's feelings. Like, I'm usually not one to get political in these things, but if Dumbledore's gay, he's gay. He likes Grindelwald. That's why you shouldn't fight him. You know, J.K. Rowling does this thing a lot where, like, she tries to sound very in with the times and, like, pro-progressive stuff, but then you see her movies and her books, and she'll say, oh, this character is this way. You know, that was all purpose for Dumbledore being gay. That was all purpose for Hermione being black and cursed child. It's it's just to appease the audience. I, I don't even know if she has any real meaning or feeling behind it. And all the characters were so underdeveloped, Theseus, God, I didn't know whether I liked the guy or didn't like the guy. Because he seemed like a dick, but then he became nice. It, there was, like, no no transition with him. It was just like, oh, he's working with the Ministry, and now he's fighting alongside Newton, and now they're all good. Like, they literally just fought him inside of the French Ministry of Magic, and now they're fighting together. There's just so much. Like, there's no development development on Theseus. None at all. Um, Nicholas Flamel is just, just thrown in there. Minerva McGonagall. She's not even born yet at that time. So, I don't understand um, why they threw in Minerva McGonagall. That's where I was saying in the non-spoiler part, when it comes to doing fan service just for the sake of doing fan service, I think that J.K. Rowling knows that this series will inevitably not be as good as Harry Potter, so she needs to throw as many Harry Potter elements in there as, like, as she can. And I have no problem with that, personally. Throwing in Harry Potter elements, that's what I want. But they have to serve a purpose. They have to have a reason for being there. You know, like, the, the Sorcerer's Stone was in this in, the, in this movie. It made an appearance. And it makes sense, because Nicholas Flamel was in this movie. So it makes sense that it was there. Um, poor Key. It was needed, so it was in this movie. Those are the things that make everything feel cohesive and, con and connected. Um, but with, with McGonagall, she shouldn't even be alive yet. So it's a connection that 
shouldn't even be there because it doesn't make sense. You know, like, I don't, I don't get it. Um, I don't know. I thought I, this movie was way too complex and it was pretty short. I mean, I mean, it was two hours long, but for a Potter movie, that is short. Usually Potter movies are, you know, uh, two and a half hours or two hours and 45 minutes. You know, the shorts of the Potter films was two and a quarter. You know, this one's just barely 200, I th or sorry, 200, wow, two hours, I think. So, it is shorter than most of the other Potter films, and it has so much detail. You know, it, Order of the Phoenix, the movie, I think it struggles because it's the shortest film taken from the book with the most details. But, the problem with Order of the Phoenix is it strips away a lot of those details. You know, it would be one thing to have that shortest movie, but with all those details. I always said they should have made, should have made the movie longer and added more details. With Fantastic Beasts and Crimes of Grindelwald, it needs to be longer and maybe even a little less. Like, there's so much pointless stuff in there. Nagini, basically pointless. No reason why Nagini is in this movie. I mean, her character was cool, but there's no reason for her. Um, the whole the romance. Like, the only romance that really even mattered in this movie was Jacob and Queenie's romance. That's the only thing that mattered when it comes to the romance. With the exception of maybe Newt and Tina, they had a little thing. But other than that, it was pointless. Um, there's a whole thing between Lita and Newt, really pointless, because, you know, I, when, at the first, after the first Fantastic Beast movie, I was like, oh, their love is going to become important. Not at all. Only, only to create tension between him and his brother. That's literally it. And she dies at the end of this film. So it's like, there was really no point for their love. And Bunty, his assistant, that was pointless. It was kind of funny, but kind of pointless to have that thrown in there. So, really... This movie was just way too much. I like the direction that it's going in terms of the story, but with how it's being presented, I don't like that. It's too much in terms of complexity, with not enough character detail and character backstories, with too many side plots and too many side things going on, and too much romance to where it takes away from the actual story. Um, so what was it? where was I going with that? Too many, too many things going on. Too much fan service. Now, let me actually no. Let me rephrase that. Too much unnecessary fan service. You know, these things shouldn't even really be considered fan service because they're in the same universe. So it's not really fan service. It's all part of one universe. Port Keys, Sorcerer's Stones. That's not fan service. It's part of the universe. So it's there regardless. Um, just whether or not we see it is one thing. So, I mean. Like, Minerva McGonagall, pointless fan service. Like, in the later films, they should have Hagrid. They should have Voldemort. Because they fit into the plot. They fit in. Because of the timelines, they fit in. But with someone like Minerva McGonagall, she just doesn't. Maybe in the later films, but not this one. Way too early. Um... The only scenes I legitimately liked were the Hogwarts scenes. Even though Minerva McGonagall was, you know, an unnecessary character, the actress that did play her did her job well. She did play Minerva McGonagall well, so I give her props to that. Uh, Jude Law as Dumbledore was also very good. Um, so all the Hogwarts scenes I really liked, and those were my favorite parts of the movie. Um, not be not simply just because of the nostalgia factor, but also because, in my opinion, they were just the most well done. Though um, I mentioned earlier, uh, shaky camera. Yeah, the scene with Alita Lestrange in the Transfiguration classroom, that camera was shaky. So, and I'm glad they like they, they gave an explanation as to why Dumbledore was teaching defense against the dark arts. Um, so at least there was that. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, I think the movie was okay. Um, you know, the main reason I say it's okay is because story wise, it's good. You know, it's perfectly fine. It's good. I like it. But man, there was so much going on. There was too much going on. You know, with every Harry Potter movie, you could talk about what the main objective was and maybe a couple other little, tiny little side things. But every single movie and book had its objectives. The Sorcerer's Stone was to protect the Sorcerer's Stone. The Chamber of Secrets was to find out who the heir of Slytherin was and to protect the Chamber of Secrets. Prince of Azkaban was, you know, finding Sirius Black. Goblet of Fire was to survive in the Tribe of the Tournament and, you know, Voldemort returning. Etc. You know, all that. But this movie, there's no direct 
plot. I guess the only one I can think of is Credence's story, but even that, you know, half the time is more so glanced over. So, this movie's trying to focus on way too much. Um, hopefully, the next movie is longer, but also defines everything more. Because if it doesn't, I can see this being a very confusing series for people to keep up on. Um, definitely not one for your casual fans. This is one that you have to know a lot about Harry Potter to understand. And even then, the inconsistencies make it rough for those of us who do know Harry Potter very well. So, I guess that's really it, guys. Uh, that's my review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Let me know what you guys thought about this movie in the comments down below. Um, maybe you guys enjoyed it, maybe you didn't. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. So, until next time, guys. See you guys in the next video.